Hi, I'm Bell Ruth Knapperstack. I'm a clinical social worker. I'm the founder of Health Journeys, an audio company that produces audios for meditation, hypnosis, guided imagery, guided meditation, uh, relaxation, and they target specific health and mental health conditions. So one of the things that happens as the result of us putting out these audios for everything from uh, depression and anxiety to cancer and stroke and diabetes is that we get a lot of questions. And we decided we would start disseminating some of the answers to these questions because some of them apply to lots of people. So here's a question that we got from James, uh, an, an older widower uh, who suffered a recent loss. So let me just read you what he wrote and what we replied with. So James says, I'm a widower, have been for decades. For many years, my five children, three daughters, two sons, ages between 67 and 49, did not speak to me or to each other at various and often lengthy periods of time. One of my sons just died of cancer, and through this devastating grief and heartache that each of us has suffered, we are all now speaking to each other and offering support and love and comfort to each other. However, I feel that over the course of time, my children will revert to their old behaviors and will again stop talking to each other or to me. So my question pertains to me. How do I talk to them? How do I help them maintain good relationships? How do I choose the correct, the correct is in caps, correct words? Do you have any guided audios that might give me some insights into the answers to these questions? Thank you for your prompt attention and any help you can offer. Sincerely, James. So here's what I answered to James. First, of course, I offered my condolences on such a wrenching loss. And then I, to answer the question, I said, as for your question as to how to find the right words to encourage your offspring to keep from slipping back into their old patterns, my answer is don't even look for those correct words. I say they're grown children. They're middle-aged grown children who are going to make their own decisions about their behavior, about how they respond to each other, and they're not going to be motivated by the right pep talk from their dad. In fact, I caution, this right words conversation might actually be the very thing that triggers and reactivates the old patterns. I, it could be that they immediately start thinking, there goes dad trying to control us and tell us how to behave as if we were still in middle school and couldn't think for ourselves or something like that. I'm interpolating. I don't know what they would be thinking, but I could see that happening. I'm an old family therapist. I could see that just goosing the whole thing you don't want. So James, don't do it. <laughs> That's my best advice. Don't do it. Instead, Instead, James, why not just model the behavior you hope to see in them, to continue seeing in them, really? Because I promise you, as this old family therapist that I am, you'll get way more mileage out of doing that. And the fact of the matter is there's no guarantee they won't slip back. You can't control that with a perfect choice of words or anything else for that matter. But you could take some consolation into the, in the fact that the loving ways they're being with each other now, those feelings were there all the time. They weren't speaking, and they just came back to the surface, you know, whole and in good shape, good working order for each other as when they were needed. So beneath the surface, 
is all that love and care and mutual concern. So if they do slip back to their old ways, they can reverse course again. They've done it. You've seen them do it. They do it well. So take comfort in that. Rather than trying to control, they're not ever going there again. There's a chance they will go there again, but they might come out faster. But there's another possibility too. A devastating loss like this could be the lasting game changer that shifts everybody. It would not be the first time that a tragic loss like this brought to mind in everyone the preciousness of life, the preciousness of each other to each other, and the short amount of time you have to enjoy and appreciate and um, just um, savor each other. So it's possible they won't slip back, but if they don't, it's not going to be because of a perfect pep talk from dad. So here's the thing. You said, here's the question that pertains to you. It really isn't pertaining to you. It's pertaining to your children and how you can get them to behave a certain way. Chuck the question. Here, the, the question needs to be you focusing on yourself, on yourself, not them, and you be the one who breaks his old patterns and behaves in the beautiful ways you hope to see exemplified in your children that you hope they'll stay with. Don't advise them inspire them instead. I hope this makes some sense to you and proves to be useful. I really hope so. But that's just my hope because just like you in this scenario, I cannot ins I cannot get you to do what I think would be best for you to do. <laughs> I can just I can just hope and wish you well, and that's what I'm doing. It's your choice. Either way, I do wish you great lasting solace, continued comfort in the difficult weeks and months ahead. I know it's not going to be any day at the beach for you or your children. So I wish you all the kindest and gentlest regards. Take good care.